Or the opposite happens. Uh, the person may become very, very withdrawn or, or closes in on themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at times may even become uh, um, self-harming or suicidal. Uh, we can't predict when these things happen, but uh, I think uh, when you live in a close, tight-knit community, people are more sensitive to that and uh, could uh, have, we have an opportunity to intervene earlier uh, before this kind of escalates. Well, would you say that um, working, working passion towards people with uh, mental challenges? As Native people, we, we are very warm, compassionate people. But when you don't understand something, the fear jumps in. For the people who have people with mental challenges and issues, uh, it's the close family members who kind of feel uh, rejected. I don't know if that's the right word to use, or isolated, or uh, like, I'm not going near them. You know what they have, or gee, they act different. They're not like me. Well, believe it or not, we're all like each other. The only thing is we view each other differently. Dealing with uh, mental health issues is a little bit uh, uh, sort of invisible. People with signs of uh, being uh, depressed or withdrawn or people uh, who sometimes act aggressively or say things that are out of order. Uh, these are tougher to, to sort of to penetrate and to see uh, what the meaning of that is. And so there is a challenge there in trying to understand that because one could easily be uh, afraid of that, like John was saying about fear, uh, or not understanding what it is. Mental health issues are uh, at times invisible and to some extent I think part of my my function uh, coming here to and working in the field of mental health is to uh, better understand uh, these uh, processes uh, to better understand uh, what and help others understand uh, what uh, these kinds of problems can bring on as well as to find solutions more so we, we have to consider that there are uh, many reasons for why people have a mood disorder. Um, so I'll give you a little example on, on the graph here as to how these things develop and, and how complicated uh, we are as human beings, even those who have uh, special conditions. It's called the stress, uh, diathesis stress model, and you can see it up here. And uh, it's several things at the same time. And you can see here that um, on the bottom here is the environment. Uh, the environment is, an is a sort of another sort of um, umbrella term. It means your environment is like your close family, your extended family, the community, as well as your friends and peers and people that you work with. Now, uh, on the other side you see is the uh, hereditary or genetics. Okay? It's an interaction of several factors at the same time. Okay, so there's hereditary as well as um, uh, environmental. The chances of a person having a mental health issue uh, depends on the type. Okay, so for example, uh, bipolar, uh, the chances uh, if you have a parent who has one, the chances of having one is somewhat higher than a child who's growing up with a family with no bipolar uh, parent. Okay, so there, it raises the, the probability, or the tendency rather, okay? It doesn't mean you're gonna have it. And, and for any individual, so if you, for example, go and see your doctor and say, look, uh, what are my chances? No one can predict for you on an individual basis. We just know this in general terms that it raises the, the propensity to have a, a uh, uh, let's say, a, any of the types of uh, mental health issues. So if you have a no, sort of an average stress life here, like this, you see, average, okay? Then it's very unlikely that you're gonna have, uh, meet this threshold here, and you're gonna get into uh, a mental health issue. Very unlikely. However, if you have a very, very highly chaotic, very stressful environment, okay? With little resources, okay? It'll raise this stress level here. Okay? And if, on the other hand, you have, let's say, two parents with mental health issues, okay? that's a very high propensity. 
Okay? It doesn't mean you're going to have necessarily a child with a, uh, a mental health issue, but it will be dependent on this environment. Okay? So you see the interaction between what genetically you could be more or less uh, have a tendency for and how the role of the environment. And there, the family becomes really, really important. Because if they understand, then it has a role in bringing down that tendency. Other things that we know too is that these episodes, uh, where it starts to, to see a flowering of these episodes, is usually in young adulthood. When you're, say, between 18 and 35. Young adulthood is because all the demands of society are now left on your shoulder. Okay? So you don't have as much your support for your family and so on. And all of a sudden you're alone, and all these yeah. things we took for granted are not there. So those we, decisions uh, can really pile up, and those decisions alone can build that stress factor. Uh, one thing that a lot of people aren't aware of, that, uh, okay, for some of us we start at 6 or 7, for some of us start a little later, but on the average, uh, we have an on-call service that, that kicks in around 4, 30, 5 o'clock, and, and they're good all night to 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. So there is 24-hour services here. There is. Uh, and if we run into a roadblock where we're not able to provide the service, we will find the service. We will okay. go out, and if that means leaving the province of Quebec to find the proper service, then that's the direction we will go in. It's not about, oh, what do we do now? No. Uh, we're problem solved. We need to find the solution, and how do we do this? So uh, KSCS uh, provides the services. The question is, we can't provide the services if we have no clients. If they just sit home and don't call, then we don't know. In dealing with very severe psychiatric uh, problems, let's say a uh, person is very, very depressed uh, and uh, may need immediate uh, assistance, you don't have to wait for KSCS. You can call the, the, uh, the fire hall and the ambulance. Okay, So we are not alone in this. Uh, it starts with uh, the doctors at Cattery Hospital, uh, it goes to uh, the ambulance, it goes to KSCS on call, it goes to the Montreal General, it goes to Anna Laberge. Uh, the, the emergency, when it's an emergency, uh, it's important that we have to gauge what kind of service they need right away. Not everybody needs an ambulance and go to the hospital. We've created, since about uh, seven, eight years now, a uh, mental health committee uh, where we handle the, uh, one of our uh, goals is to look at advocacy and creating bridges with the hospitals. So we actually have met with the uh, emergency uh, chief uh, at the Montreal General, we've met with people at the uh, Anna Laberge, and we create links with them so that there is a better flow of uh, communication. Back, back, back to here, yeah. And often uh, uh, the clients, uh, usually they, they, may, they, they have to choose whether they want uh, uh, assistance from us or not. Uh, the doctor may also refer them. They may say, look, uh, you need to see somebody in close to your community. And uh, we do a lot of that as well. But advocacy means that we have to uh, build better bridges with uh, the, the hospitals around us so that there's better communication, uh, so that we can uh, kind of prevent the big problems from happening. Uh, globally, according to the World Health Organization, there is an increase for a variety of different reasons, but there is uh, an increase in uh, uh, mental health uh, 